Tonight, Mastermind. Tonight, four more contenders are about to take the toughest test on television. First, Stuart McLagan, a hearings clerk from Dundee, answers questions on the contest that unites and occasionally divides a continent. Peter Cowan, a pharmacist from Morden, on a series of decisive military campaigns by Rome's greatest leader. Matthew Platz, a sales consultant from Reading, tackles a Russian-born novelist and influential political philosopher. And Aline Griffiths, a retired personal assistant from Atterbury, on a glorious period in a glorious city. Four contenders, two rounds of questions, one aim to become the nation's mastermind. and welcome to Mastermind. 96 contenders are vying for the title of Mastermind this year and tonight you will see four of them. They're going to be quizzed first on their chosen subject and then on general knowledge. All under the pressure of the clock, two minutes is all they get. So let's see who can hold their nerve and ask our first contender to join us please. And your name is? Stuart McLagan. Your occupation? Hearings Clerk. And your chosen subject? The history of the Eurovision Song Contest. Eurovision started in 1956, the first contest, um, initially to show off the technical m abilities which made it possible to actually, for the EBU to actually broadcast to all these countries simultaneously. And it's developed since then into become one of the, the largest and most popular televised events. People have been saying that countries have voted for their, their neighbours regardless of the song quality, but I suppose with shared cultural and linguistic and historical ties, it, it's, it can be understandable. Every year there's just something that just makes you go, oh my goodness, that's just amazing. The Eurovision Song Contest in two minutes starting now. Which country won the Eurovision Song Contest in 2009? It was held in Moscow for the first time. Norway. Yes, who performed the UK's first entry in the contest in 1957 with the song All? Patricia Bredin. Correct. The so-called Big Four countries, who in recent years have been granted automatic qualification to the contest, are the United Kingdom, France, Germany, and which other country? Spain. Yes, which 1982 winning song became the UK's 500th number one single when it was translated and released in English? A Little Peace. Correct. Which television presenter hosted the contest for a fourth time at Brighton in 1974? Katie Boyle. Yes, after winning the contest in 73, which country became the first to have successive outright wins? Luxembourg. Yes, Lise Assier represented Switzerland in the first three Eurovision contests, who became the country's second singer in 59. Pass. Anne-Marie David won the 73 contest representing Luxembourg. Which country did she represent six years later, finishing in third place? France. Yes, in 1980, which African country was represented in the contest for the one and only time to date? Morocco. Yes. What was the interval act of the 94 contest in Dublin? It went on to become an international phenomenon. Riverdance. Yes, Cheryl Baker has represented the UK twice in the contest as a member of Winners Bucks Fizz in 81, and with which other group three years earlier? Coco. Yes. Which Swiss city hosted the first contest in 56 at the Teatro Corsal? Lugano. Yes. The French withdrew their entry from the 74 contest as a mark of respect following whose death? Uh, Georges Pompidou. Correct. The president. What was the name of the Norwegian act that became the first to receive no points after the new scoring system was introduced in 1975? Uh, Jan Tegen? Yes. Which Belgian duo had to drop out of the 71 contest because one of them got jaundice, although they did appear two years later? Kim and... No, Nicole and Hugo. In 1960, which was the first venue in the UK to host the contest? The Royal Festival Hall. It was. Which country finished as a runner-up on its debut appearance? I've started. So I'll finish in 1994, the first time a country had done this since the inaugural contest. Poland. Is correct. You had just one pass. Lise Assier represented Switzerland in the first three Eurovision contests. And Krista Williams became the country's second singer in 1959. But you have, Stuart McLagan, 
15 points. <laughs>10. Empire Day was for many years celebrated on the 24th of May in commemoration of whose birth on that date in 1819? Queen Victoria? Yes. What is the popular name for hydrosis, a bodily reaction often caused by fear or increased temperature? Sweating. Yes. Which singer-songwriter who died aged 60 in January 2009 wrote the song May You Never, covered by Eric Clapton on his Slow Hand album? Reg Presley. John Martin. Pongiste is the French word for a player of which sport? Bulls? Table tennis. What name was given particularly in Cornwall to people who lured ships onto the rocks in order to plunder their cargoes? Uh, buccaneers. Wreckers. Which character from Greek mythology was bound according to the title of a play by Aeschylus and is unbound in a poem by Shelley? Uh, Odysseus. Prometheus. Which club beat Sheffield United in the 2009 playoff final to gain promotion to the top division of English football for the first time since 1976? Burnley. Yes. What's the largest city and the capital of Indonesia? Jakarta. Yes. Which carry-on film features Kenneth Connor as an ancient Briton, Hengist Pod, and Sheila Hancock as his wife, Senna? Carry-on Cleo. Yes. Which famous tenor made a triumphant comeback less than two years after being diagnosed with leukemia in 1987? Pavarotti? No, Carreras. Whose first novel was Decline and Fall in 1928? George Orwell. Evil in War. Walk Like an Egyptian was a hit in 1986 for which girl group? The Bangles. Yes, the sprinters Usain Bolt and Asafa Powell represent which Commonwealth country? Jamaica. Yes, what is the name of the detective played by David Caruso in the television series CSI Miami? Horatio Cain. Yes, the 18th century Anglo-French series of conflicts known as the Carnatic Wars were fought in which Asian country? Uh, China. No, India. Which chemical element takes its name from the Greek word for colour? Iodine. Chromium. No passes. Stuart McLagan, you have 25 points. Well, it really does not get closer than that. Let's have a look at the scores. In fourth place with 19 points, Aline Griffiths. Third place with 22 points, Matthew Platts. Second place with 25 points and two passes, Peter Cowan. First place, 25 points and one pass, Stuart McLagan. Which means, of course, that Stuart McLaggen is tonight's winner and goes through to the semi-finals. Congratulations to him. Commiserations to Peter, but because he was a high-scoring runner-up, it is possible that he will make the semi-finals. If you would like to be a contender on the next series, do go to our website, bbc.co.uk, stroke mastermind, and do join us next time for more Masterminds. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. We're at an island parish to see whether it's good news and a big move for the Reverend next here on BBC Two. And then brace yourself for a brand new series. Empire of the Seas crashes onto our screens later at nine o'clock. And there's a taste of what's to come in just a sec. Join Dan Snow on a voyage to sea. The nation's new destiny lay out there on the ocean to discover how the royal navy drove britain into the modern age the navy expanded to become the most complex industrial enterprise on earth it transformed our economy our sense of national identity and our democracy england's view of its place in the world would never be the same again empire of the seas tonight at nine on bbc two